Hi, this is Steve at blessedhopeforever.com, blessedhopeforever1.com. We are in the process of uh, updating the website, moving to another server. Uh, this is the, at least for now, the web address for the website. I invite you to go there, uh, check out what's new. Uh, if you feel led, support us. Uh, this, that's an act of worship. We consider that an act of worship on the part of the Lord's folk. And if you do not know Him, we ask that you please not give. BHF is not a store. We are to feast on Christ daily. Uh, he's our only message. Um, we live in a world system that uh, is anti-Christian, uh, basically. A world religious system. And we're going to talk some more about that. I'll probably be talking about that until, well, time stops. Everyone practicing evil hates the light, doesn't come to the light so that his works may not be exposed. You don't want to be one of those. The context is born of the Spirit, not the flesh, the new birth itself. Uh, John 3, 19, and this is the verdict. The, the light is coming to the world, but men love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever practices the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen clearly that what he has done has been accomplished in God. His works have been wrought in God. It's one of my favorite topics. Every soul on earth today knows how we are saved. Okay, just re repeat the sinner's prayer. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Uh, by His death, He made salvation possible. If you'll just come to Him, not true. We do not find Him. He finds us. He's the shepherd. We're the sheep. That's the picture in Scripture. The picture is not a sheep finding the shepherd but the shepherd finding the sheep. And most Christians know that this to be true. No man seeks after God, Romans 3.11. As God's children, we exist. Our whole purpose for being is to tell His people what Christ did, who His people are, how they stand before Him, holy, unblameable, unreprovable in His sight, spotless, we have been commissioned to present these truths before the ears of God's people where the Holy Spirit can remove the veil. The doctrine of predestination and election is not a new thing that began with Calvin and has since gradually lost favor with the passing of the years until today it is believed by only a few and understood by even fewer. It is synonymous with the gospel of salvation by grace. It is the gospel, in fact. Any departure from the doctrine of election in any degree is a departure from the gospel. For such departure always involves the introduction of some obligation on man's part to make some contribution towards his own salvation, a contribution that he simply cannot make when it's a salvation that comes to him purely by grace and grace alone. This is unrealistic uh, with respect to man, and it is also dishonoring with respect to God. There are no shades of truth here. This is an all-or-nothing doctrine. Election and the gospel are alike in this. There are no halfway positions that are not a total betrayal of the truth of God. Paul is very explicit and completely logical when he says regarding the method by which man is to be saved, if it is by grace, then it, it is no more works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Romans 11.6 There simply is no way out of this equation. If man contributes anything to his salvation, even his own responsiveness of heart or the exercise of his own faith, 
then salvation is no longer by grace. Instead, it becomes a cooperative effort between man and God in which the decision of man and not of God determines the issue. This is what we call synergism. And it is not synergism, folks. It is monergism. God alone. But grace goes far beyond just the matter of redemption, being born again, new birth. The same grace carries us through life. Most Christians today believe God makes decisions based on the decisions that we make. Not true, dearly beloved. It is not, that is not true. Has He not declared everything from the beginning? I declare the end from the beginning, says God, and ancient times from what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and all my good pleasure I will accomplish, Isaiah 46.10. So why do so few Christians actually believe God concerning these truths? God said to His people, Israel, he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4.6, the greatest selling book in all of history is sadly the most neglected. We must spend time in His Word. Dearly beloved, think of what it costs God for us to hold that book in our hands and hide its truths in our hearts. Mere mention of the words election or predestination today almost always brings you know, to people's minds the, the name of Calvin as though it all began with Calvin. It all began with him and, and it was an unheard of doctrine before his time. Very few are aware of the continuity of the tradition during the centuries following the close of the New Testament. Even fewer people are aware of the fact that John's Gospel probably contains the most explicit and, and the most frequent statements on the subject to be found anywhere in the Bible. The Old Testament is also full of it. It is, in all truth, the heart of the Gospel. The whole of Scripture declares this fact in symbol. It declares it in parable and just in, in plain declaration. Calvin was continuing a very scriptural tradition by his insistence on the absolute sovereignty of God in the matter of man's salvation. So I'd like to draw your attention to passages of Scripture which need really need few words of explanation. They, they represent the tips of icebergs. Just below the surface is a mass of evidence if, if if one cares to look, open your heart to these verses and you may wonder how that you could have been reading the Word of God for so many years without becoming aware of the true nature of its message. In the Old Testament, there are numerous references to the total depravity of man to the absolute sovereignty of God in the life of the individual, even as God is sovereign in the history of the human race, and that salvation is an act of pure grace on the part of God. <clears throat> I want to go over uh, the following passages with you uh, from the Old Testament first. Those which underscore the total sinfulness of human nature. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Genesis 6.5 Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Job 14.4 What is man that he should be clean? And he who is born of a woman that he should be righteous? How much more abominable 
and filthy is man who drinks iniquity like water, Job 14, or Job 15, chapter, chapter 15, verses 14 and 16. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that does good. No, not one. Psalm 14, 2 and 3. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity. In sin did my mother conceive me. Psalm 51, 5. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Every one of them has gone back. They are altogether become filthy. There is none that does good. No, not one. Psalm 53. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil, Ecclesiastes 8. Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed nor bound up, neither mollified with ointment, Isaiah 1, 5, and 6. Here's a verse we're all familiar with. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53. But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And we do all fade as a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Isaiah chapter 6. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jeremiah 17, 9. The good man perishes out of the earth, and there is none upright among men. They all lie and wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asks and the judge asks for a reward and the great man, he utters his mischievous desires so they weave it together. The best of them is like a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. Micah chapter 7 verses 2 and 4. And then we have those passages which declare the sovereignty of, of God, not only in the general sweep of history, but in the particulars of individual lives, yours and mine. The kingdom is the Lord's, and He is governor among the nations, Psalm twenty-two, twenty-eight. 28. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and sets up another. Psalm 75, 6 and 7. Surely the wrath of man shall praise you. The remainder of wrath shall you restrain. Psalm 76. The Lord has prepared His throne in the heavens and His kingdom rules over all. Psalm 103. Our God is in the heavens. He has done whatsoever He has pleased. Psalm 115. Whatsoever the Lord pleased that He did in heaven and in the earth, in the seas and all deep places. Psalm 135.6. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Proverbs 16, 9. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. Proverbs 19, 21. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. 
The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turns it whithersoever he will. Proverbs 21.1 There is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work and who shall hinder it? Thus says the Lord. Isaiah 43.13 who is he that says, and it comes to pass when the Lord commanded it not? Lamentations 3, verse 37. Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, caused his army to serve a great service against Tyre, and every head was made bald, and every shoulder was peeled. Yet had he no wages, nor his army for Tyre, for the service that he had served against it. Therefore, thus says, says the Lord God, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt unto Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall take her multitude, and take her spoil, and take her prey, and it shall be wages for his army. I have given him the land of Egypt for his labor, wherewith he served against it, because they wrought, or in other words, they worked for me, says the Lord God. Ezekiel 29, 18 and 20, through 20. Daniel said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are, are His, and He, He, changed the times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. Daniel chapter 2, verses 20 and 21 that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomsoever He will and sets up over it the basest of men. Hello. Daniel 4.17 Nebuchadnezzar blessed and honored Him whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and whose kingdom is from generation to generation, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What are you doing? Daniel chapter 4, verses 34 and 35. The Most High God rules in the kingdom of men, and he appoints over it whomsoever he will, Daniel chapter 5, verse 21. As far as election goes, I want you to consider the following. The Lord will show who are His and who is holy and will cause Him to come near unto Him, even Him whom He has chosen will He cause to come near unto Him? Numbers 16.5 I have reserved to Myself 7,000 which have not bowed the knee to Baal. 1 Kings 19.18 Blessed is the man whom Thou choosest and causest to approach unto Thee. Psalm 65.4 Quicken, that is, revive us, and we will call upon thy name. Note, note the order there. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts, and we shall be saved. Psalm 80, verse 18 and 19. The people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Psalm 110, verse 3. The preparation of the heart in man and the response or the, or the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Proverbs 16, 1. Lord, Thou will ordain peace for us, for Thou have wrought all our works in us. Isaiah 26, 12. O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walks to direct his steps. Jeremiah 10, 23. Turn Thou me, and I shall be turned, for Thou art the Lord my God. Surely, after that I was turned, I repented. Jeremiah 31, 18 and 19. I will pardon whom I reserve. Jeremiah 50, 20. Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. Lamentations 5, 21. 
A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. It should not be too surprising then in the light of, of such passages as these that the Gospels should reflect the same truth. When man approaches God in search of salvation in God's way, it is only because he has first been called of God. What is perhaps more surprising is that the clearest of all of the Gospels in this respect is the Gospel of John which is certainly the gospel of love in most people's eyes. In view of the fact that popular opinion holds election to be a cold and even repugnant doctrine reflecting the harshness and the unfairness of God rather than His love and graciousness, many Christians never even look for evidences of election in John. But the doctrine is more firmly established there in the gospel of John than in any one of the other synoptic Gospels. And it is for the most part the words of our Lord Himself rather than John that the truth is, is best established. In John 6, I've done videos on this, putting together the words of verses 37 and 39, 40, 44, and 65, we have this N66. We have this clear proclamation of election by grace initiated entirely by our Heavenly Father. All that the Father gives me shall come to me. And this is the Father's will who has sent me, that of all whom He has given me, I shall lose nothing. This is the will of Him that sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes on Him may have everlasting life. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. The result of, of these statements made with such force and, and repetition by our Lord was that many of His disciples were highly offended. Same occurs today. And why not? These statements simply reduce the, the, the disciples' works to nothing. For if they were to be saved, it was to be in no sense to their personal credit. But how did Jesus respond to their offense? Well, He repeated His words in no uncertain terms. Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto Me except it were given unto him of My Father. Think about how that this must have humbled them when it dawned upon him that he really meant it. We are told, in fact, that from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Verse 66. John 6, verse 66. 666. Do what you want to with the numbers, but folks, there is no doubt about it. The opening chapters of John bear out the implications of this pronouncement. We are not born again by the will of man, nor by the will of the flesh, nor by blood relationship, but of God. It is God and God alone who gives us power to become His children. John 1, 12, 12 and 13. Chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. Equally clear is the Lord's statement in John 15, 16, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And if you need further confirmation, Peter's no different in his first sermon when he says in Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and 39, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Don't throw out the last few words of that verse. Amazing. Now in closing, I just want to say that by my calculations, we appear to be at the 39.84% point of 40, 40 representing 50 jubilees or 2,000 years. That means we are 0.16% away from what I believe is the end of the present dispensation of grace. Think of it sort of like a 40-gallon gas tank and you've used 39.84% of it. Dearly beloved, how do you want to meet him when he returns? Look, I love you all. I truly do. Thank you so much for all of your comments. Thank you for following us all these years. We pray for you constantly. Keep us in, in prayer as well. We love you. We truly do. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.